But as this push continues, push in the Biden administration to forgive at least some amount of student debt without means testing, just across the board, the idea is to knock down myth after myth about student debt. This is not, you're not going to give a big boon to Ivy Leaguers who are making millions of dollars. Here is Elizabeth Warren uh, at the Senate Baking, uh, Banking uh, Committee hearing. Banking Committee sounds nice, though. Well, that that's what it'll be replaced with after uh, the Supreme Court is done with everything. Good. Um, I'll be at the What's head of this it. woman doing on the Banking Committee? Yeah. This is <laughs> this more is like silly. the Banking Committee. <laughs> Um, and uh, she is um, a questioning Equity Research a co-op co-founder, Dr. Jaleel Bishop, on that very question. Do most borrowers take out loans so they can attend elite schools or business schools, Dr. Bishop? No. And as someone who went, to, as someone who's a low-income student who went to one of these elite schools, we know that the vast majority of borrowers are not coming from the Ivy League. That when we look at those selective schools, we see around 0.3% of all borrowers come from the Ivy Leagues. Well, wait a minute, Dr. Bishop, can you say that one the other way? What proportion of student loan borrowers are not coming from the Ivy Leagues? So 99% come from institutions that are not the Ivy League. 99, 99.7, uh, according to your data, yeah. right? Okay, so they're not- 99.7%. The money you would expend on developing a means testing apparatus would probably cost you more than allowing that 0.3% who went to an Ivy League school to get debt forgiveness. Now, that's also assuming that just by going to an Ivy League school, right? I mean, if you needed to a loan to go to an Ivy League school, Chances are you needed the money and you come from a family that is not super wealthy. Yeah, I know one person uh, I grew up with who went to Yale and they took loans. And certainly it helps you on the job market to have come from Yale or Brown or Harvard, I imagine. That's not a golden ticket. But it's not a golden ticket. You still have to pay back those loans. And also, we want people who go to Yale or Harvard or Brown exactly. or whatever it is to go into professions that don't pay a lot of money, that go into jobs that don't pay a lot of money. We want those people to go into public service. We want those people to become social workers or teachers. And if they've got a loan burden, they're less inclined to do it. So it's both A, that it tells you nothing that these people went to an Ivy League school and it also is just not the case that there's many of them, if that's what your, your problem is. And in fact, excluding them from this kind of provision is like a negative incentive that just codifies this, you know, rarefied system around Ivy League schools, it just funnels them into like being a corporate lawyer or being yeah. a banker. Why is that? Why is that what they want? It, because well, they, these exactly. kinds of people I mean, love, love Ivy League institutions. Yeah, I mean, this is, you know, this, this exchange is geared towards one person, and that is Joe Biden, yeah. because he's got some people saying this is not uh, a thing, and other people saying this is a thing, and that's what's going on in the White House right now. That is literally what's going on right now. And you have all these teal Republicans like Blake Masters who went to Stanford and J.D. Vance who went to Yale making the argument that... Uh, Warren is refuting there um, and it's it is like it's it, it's capitalism is really the problem like you look at what uh, people go to school for quantitative analysis what they what have they been doing for like my adult life is first they were um, moving fake numbers around that led to the uh, housing crisis and now they're doing crypto shit and like mm -hmm. trying to make the next uh, thing that a venture capitalist can sell to Google right like th that's the real problem not um, you know eggheads going to college getting too woke yeah, we the, the we should have done the story on uh, Blake Masters. I just I totally forgot. I read the read the piece in like the Arizona s something over uh, over the weekend about how Blake Masters wants to um, o uh, the Supreme Court to look into overturning Griswold. 
um, yeah. and which is the the birth control. Yep. Uh, Griswold uh, v. Connecticut. The Connecticut from the '60s, um, which allowed for married couples to to access contraception. Um, these these folks, and this is really just an aside, but they're the ones making this this case, um, and it's being taken seriously. They're just Republicans theocrats in different packaging like blake masters and jd vance are supposed to be this new sexy flavor all uh coming from peter Thiel's brain trust and uh he's funding their campaigns and yet they're ab- advocating for the same garbage here we go blake masters in griswold the justices wholesale made up a constitutional right to achieve a political outcome i am opposed to judges making law it is the job of the legislative branch to create laws not the courts this is separation of powers 101 so like there he's getting around it, and Republicans do that all the time by criticizing the methodology in which these justices reached this activist conclusion about women, or actually just couples, having the right to contraception. Um, it's the same guy. Not, uh, it's the uh, same person as all the Republicans we've seen for decades course, and decades. Of course. But they think that it's like a new, it, but, they just look a little bit different, and they're younger, and they come from VCs and, and fancy colleges. Give always, me a break. But this always happens. I'm telling you, like, you know, Paul Ryan, they, they did like uh, big spreads, like, you know, new, new sheriffs in town, and blah, blah, blah. This, they, the press always does this. They always find the new hip Republicans who are the same reactionaries. It's just that they're wearing like a leather coat or. <laughs> They've got, uh, you know, they've got a, uh, like a hip haircut. But I just don't want people to just marinate on this for a second. Think about the idea that there is an entire political party, and they have control now of the main apparatus to interpret the Constitution, that believes that the Constitution, the freedoms that you have, do not include the right for you to take birth control. That is a right that needs to be bestowed upon you by a Senate where 40 million Americans can vote for Democrats, but it's controlled by the Republicans. 40 million extra people, I should say. Signed by a president We've had, uh, you know, now two of whom have been uh, elected without the popular vote. And a house that's incredibly gerrymandered. Those people, those politicians have to, you don't have a right to take birth control. Those people have to bestow that right upon you. What other rights do you need bestowed upon you? Guys like Blake Masters talk about freedom and liberty and this and that, but he does not believe that you have the freedom or liberty to take birth control pills. Is there legislation that says we're allowed to have uh, uh, aspirin? Or Twitter accounts? Twitter accounts? or what? I mean, what, what else? What else don't we have the right? I mean, it's... I love this pose of, I, I want you to have rights. I just don't want you to get them from the Supreme Court. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but it's not from the Supreme Court. Does the Constitution give you the right to take birth control pills? Does the Constitution give you the right to take um, aspirin? Does it give you the right to eat food? Where does it say in the Constitution you're allowed to eat food? Is there a law that says we allow people to eat food? I mean, the strict constructionism thing is really it is so stupid to the point where, like, Thomas Jefferson gave up on it when he bought the Louisiana Purchase, right? Like, that was, and, and they were having those arguments where saying the Constitution doesn't say you can do it. And it's like, well, we got to. Yeah. So, it, like, this is such a moot debate that it's, it's insane that we still have to do no, it. No, this, so this is, this is theocracy. This is our Taliban. 